Welcome back to Cloud42, I'm James. Today we're continuing work on the tool post grinder. This is gonna be part 20, and today we're gonna to be cutting the taper on the back of the wheel arbor so that it'll fit into the tool post grinder spindle. If you haven't seen the other parts of this video series, there's a link down in the description, like always. Let's go over to the lathe and get started. Okay, this is the wheel arbor so far. You can see we've got our diameter for the wheel register and the face register and the threads. And now on the other side of this, we need to take material off and create an eight degree taper to fit into the ER20 uh, collet taper of the spindle. So I could try to mount this up in the, in the three jaw chuck or in a four jaw chuck this way, but the chances of getting it actually running true, true enough for a high speed arbor, remember this thing's gonna spin it up to 7,000 RPM. Um, I really want it more concentric than that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill and tap a hole in a fixture so that I can mount this all in one setup, bore a register, mount this in the lathe, and then turn the other side holding it by this, uh, by this register. Okay, the material we're gonna use is this. This is hex aluminum, inch and a half. Um, I really would have preferred steel for this, but um, this is all that my metal supplier had in stock locally an inch and a half. They only had steel up to inch and an eighth. So go ahead and mount this up in the lathe. And we're gonna face both sides of this, and you'll understand why later. I'm actually gonna reuse this when I'm done, and I want the ends parallel. Now I'm holding it off of the back of the chuck. I'm not putting it all the way back so that the jaws will center it up perpendicular to the axis of rotation. Okay, I'm just gonna come in here with a uh, high positive turning tool. This is a carbide insert uh, CCGX specifically for um, specifically for aluminum and just face this off. Just make sure we cleaned up all the way across and looks like we did. Okay, now I'm gonna flip it around and this time I'm gonna put that freshly faced side back tight against the chuck face. Let me make sure it's clean here. Try to get this centered as well as I can on the faces. Okay, there we go. Now let's face the other side. And of course the chips all piled up against there and kind of ruined the surface finish, but you know, that's how it goes. Okay, now in order to put this through here, we need a hole. I'm grab a drill check. And I will start with a number four center drill. For the drilling operations, I'm gonna slow it down. Okay, this is set to 720 RPM for drilling. So A9. And I'll just drill this out. The pilot diameter, this is a number 14, doesn't really matter. And we're gonna drill this one all the way through.
follow that one up with a 3 8 inch drill. And again, we're just gonna go all the way through. A little more A9 on here. This one may chatter a bit entering. Okay, I've got a boring bar set up here with the same CCGX insert, and when I say it's the same insert, I mean it's literally the same insert because I only have one. Set the gear train here, A2. Okay, that looks good. And now let me take a take one pass through the bore and get a measurement. See where we are. We're right about 390, which means we need to take 31 thousandths off of each side. Let's take 15 and see where that leaves us. Try to get this centered so we get a more accurate measurement. We are at 415. You need to take another 19. I'm gonna take that in a couple of passes. Now we're gonna go ahead and tap the thing all the way through and then we'll come back and bore the register. And of course, to tap it, we want it nice and slow. So we'll go all the way down to 150 RPM. Okay, this is a half 20 spiral point plug tap. and we'll just let it auto feed itself, get it lubed up nice, and just let it feed itself through.
Okay, so we've got that drilled out. I've now or tapped and I've got the boring bar back here. Now we only want to go a half inch deep on this. Actually, 400 would be fine. So I'm going to set my dial indicator at the surface here. We're about four thou shy. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and grab this outer part that's going to be turned off. Snug this down nice and tight. We'll have to use the copper when we take it off later. Okay, so we've got the, uh, the part mounted up in our, in our holder, in our fixture. And now the first thing we need to do is face this thing to length. Now, the actual length needs to be from the shoulder just over an inch. And so we've got quite a bit of material that needs to come off of this. So you know I'm just going to take a face off of that first, and so we have something reasonable to measure from. I'm running this at 1200 RPM just because this diameter is over an inch. Great, now let's see how thick we are now compared to where we need to go. Okay, so the overall thickness we're targeting is 1.101. And we are currently at 1.1. which means we have 183 thou to go. So let me touch off here and set up my dial indicator. Okay, and let's take down 183 thousandths. Start with 20 and see how it cuts. That's great, let's try 30. Another 30. So bring us to 110. So 140. Just take a quick check, see where we are. One one forty two, and we're going to one one oh one. Means we've got forty one thou to go, which is just about what we thought. Okay, let's take twenty of that. And then let's take the last twenty one. Ok, 
Okay, that looks nice. We're looking for a 1101. Let's see what we actually hit. It's like one, 103, one, 103 and a half. That is gonna be just fine. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is turn this down. And the total depth of that is gonna be 901. So let me zero out the dial indicator again. Go in 901. One, two, oh, I don't have it, I don't have it straight. Cosine error is not your friend. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 901. So right there is where I'm going to want my new zero. Gonna lock the carriage here real quick so that it doesn't move around on me. And let's set the zero there. Can you see that? I'm gonna adjust the camera here a moment so you can see that. Okay. So that's where we're gonna go. Let me come 10 thou off of that and make a mark. That way I won't do anything really dumb. And let's take a cut. I'm gonna stay 10 thou shy of that. Okay, that chip did not break. We'll try 30 thou again, but let's increase the feed rate. That was, fifth, that was five thou per revolution. Let's go to six thou per revolution. See if we can get the chips to break. And in fact, I'm gonna make it 40 thou depth of cut. Okay, those were flying right in my face. Let's try 30 thou and see what happens with that. That is still coming right in my face. Let's try going a little bit deeper, see if we can break them. Seven thou. Try seven thou, 30 thou depth of cut. Try 40 thou depth of cut at seven thou. That's better. So I'm getting some nice dark chips. They're starting to turn blue. And let's see where we are. 
still over an inch, and we're trying to get down to 787. So I'll just keep taking 40 thou. <laughs> Yet, yet. See how close we are to our number. We're right about nine twenty six. I mean, we have one hundred and thirty nine to go, which means sixty nine off of each side. So I think I'm going to slow the feedback down. And we're going to take a lighter depth of cut. We've got 70 thou basically to go. Let's take 30 and then a couple of 20s. Now I need to back face this and I've got another 20 thou to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and feed in and back face and then come back to my number. And I'm just marking on my dial down here where that is. the last five, and then back face out. Okay, looks like we're in about the right place. That shoulder depth is supposed to be 901. Let's see what we've actually got. 898 is fine, 898 and a half. So we're within two thou. I am going to be just fine with that. Okay, and this is not too hot at all. It's actually pretty good. Okay, so things left to do. We got to drill and tap, and then we got to cut the taper. I think I'm going to go ahead and drill and tap first. disappointed that that seemed to wobble a little bit as it went in. Unfortunately, there's not a lot I can do about it. A nice chamfer on the edge there. Now let me grab the draw bar and let's give it a test fit. Yeah, it's 
not perfect, but it's just gonna have to do. The real question will be what it's like at speed. Okay, last thing to do here is actually cut the taper on this thing. Let me get things turned around and set up to do that. Okay, we need to cut a taper on here and it's eight degrees per side, so 16 degrees total. And to do that, we need to turn the compound around to actually follow on that, that eight degrees. And there's lots of ways to set this up. You can try to set something up in the bore with the correct taper and then put a dial indicator on that. I'm actually gonna use an angle block. So I got a five degree and a three degree and we put those together, I get eight degrees. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set those up on this surface and then dial this parallel to the axis of the lathe. There's a couple things we need to do first. Okay, the first thing to do is just to make sure that this surface is actually uh, parallel, actually parallel to the motion so that we can use it as a register. get this into the camera shot here for you. Make sure I'm actually on there, and I am. And run this along, and you can see that the dial indicator is not moving at all, meaning that this ground surface on the side here is actually parallel to the motion. That means that we can use it as a reference. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is, let me just get this out of the way. Next thing we need to do is we need to set up the angle blocks on this surface. And to do that, I'm gonna use a magnet. Got my little Mighty Mag here. My blocks, again, that's a five and a three, which is eight. And as it turns out, I'm doing this backwards. I actually need these flipped around the other direction, which is no big deal. See what happens when we start to snug this down. There we go, pretty much zero movement. I'm gonna call that good. Okay, we're all set up here to turn this taper and I've got my uh, Kyocera insert in here. Let me make sure I've got the lathe running fast enough. I want a good surface finish out of this, so I'm gonna run it at 2400 RPM. I checked 150 is not going to work. I've got the compound uh, all set up at eight degrees, so we can just run it in and out and actually cut that taper. I have an ER25 tool holder that we can use to test and see where we are, see how we're doing. And uh, I've got the carriage locked, so all we're gonna be doing is feeding in with the cross slide and then feeding with the compound. Now, feeding with the compound over and over and over on something like this is really irritating. So, I have a cordless drill with a point in the end of it and a bar that will allow me to turn the compound. and I'm gonna use this for my feed. 
So let's take a couple of cuts and just see how this goes. Let's try forward. Try taking ten thousandths. That looks pretty good. Try 20. Just try 10. Ten more. Now we know we're ultimately trying to get this taper down within ten thousand the or a hundred thousand the end, so. Take another 10. Take one, take another 10 and then we'll see how we're doing. It doesn't look too bad. Let's see how this taper fits. And that's interesting. That's not a very good fit. Unless I've got a burr or something there. Oh, yeah, I must have had a burr. Oh, it feels really good. And it's locking, I can give a little twist, and that holds really well. Let's just see what little blue looks like on it. I think we're pretty close here, but let's just see what this does. It's not authoritative, but we are getting a hit down here and we're getting a hit at the top. So I think we're gonna be close enough. So. Let me go in and find my zero again, and let's just keep going. Okay, let's take another 10. Another 10. Let's push it a little faster, see how the surface finish responds. Oh, 
That looks all right. That is maximum speed. So I think this is just the best surface finish we're gonna get. Okay, let's just keep taking 10 until we get within a hundred thousandths of the end. Let me grab a scale that can measure that. We're at about 250 right now. We'll take 10. So we were at 250, we took 10, and now we're about 190. So it took, taking 10 took about 60-ish. And if we're right now at about 90, then we need to take about 15. Let's just take five and sneak up on it. Okay, that's almost exactly 100 thou off the end, which is right where we wanted to be. Let's see how this looks. That, that feels great. Okay, let me uh, get the carriage out of here and bring in a little Scotch-Brite, see if we can polish that up. Make it real pretty. We're definitely hitting on the top. We're hitting a little bit further down. I'm going to take just a touch more at the top here, though.
there we go. I'm happy with that. Okay. Polish it up. And up here just to break it. That's it. See if we can get it off now. Okay, well that is the arbor complete. We've got the register on the inside, the diameter and threads, and now we've got the taper and the drawbar threads. The only thing left to do is try it in the tool post grinder. Now, I've got the grinder actually mounted in the lathe now for the first time, at least the first time on camera. Um, got it mounted up in the tool post just like it's going to run, more or less parallel to the cylindrical axis of the lathe. Let's go ahead and mount this. Make sure the taper's clean on both sides. That's actually very, very nice. Now I've got the drawbar. Let's put the drawbar in. Tighten that down, give it a little snug with the wrench. Now I don't, again, I don't have all the pin spanners and stuff in here, so I can't snug this down the way it'll actually be when it's running. But there it is. In the, uh, in the taper of the spindle, turning. Now, the astute among you will note that there are wires connected to this for the first time. Uh, the motor is connected to a speed controller. This is a 60 volt, 30 amp speed controller, though this motor doesn't pull more than 30 amps, or it's more than three amps. We're actually running it at 40 volts. This is a 48 volt power supply, adjustable, turned down to 40 or 42, as low as it would go. So we should be set up to turn it. Get it switched so it'll go forward, and let's turn it on. Okay, that's about as slow as it'll go. We're just turning, I don't know, a few hundred RPM, a couple hundred RPM. Go ahead and turn it up to about half speed. This will be a, around 3,400, which is about the, uh, about half the speed that the motor's capable of. Just let you hear that. The vast majority of the sound you're hearing is actually from the belt. Turn it all the way up to 7,000 or 6,800 or so. And there it is running nice and smooth and quiet. Boy, I just can't even feel any run out in that. That is just beautiful. Okay, well, we didn't build a tool post grinder to just run it empty. Let's put a wheel on it. Okay, I have a wheel here. And the first thing I'm gonna do, since we're gonna be running this up, you know, getting close to its max RPM, is I'm gonna ring it and make sure it's good. And that sounds good. You get that nice, bright ringing sound, not a dull thud or a click. Put that on the arbor. We'll get the front flange here. Now I can't really tighten this down properly because there are no spanner holes in the end of this yet, but I can <clears throat> torque it some. Now I do not have a guard on this yet and I do not have this torque down the way it should be, so I'm gonna accelerate and decelerate very gently, and I'm gonna stand completely over here on the other side, away from the wheel, and certainly, I'm over here now, and certainly away from the uh, direction that the wheel go if it, it will go if it does happen to burst or if anything happens. So I'll spin this up gently. There we are turning slowly. That's about half RPM. You can hear just a tiny bit more vibration. Don't really feel anything in the tool. 
Yeah, I don't really feel, feel anything. Um, but you can hear it, and this is because the wheel hasn't been trued yet, so it's certainly not running concentric. Go ahead and run all the way up to 6800. And the one thing I heard there, just a little bit of resonance, and that was the uh, sheet metal of the power supply, which won't be sitting on the ways of the lathe. There it is, 6800 RPM with a four inch wheel. Okay, I'm gonna slow this down, because if I just turn it off suddenly, it will unscrew itself and shoot across the shop. Okay, there we go. Well, now you've seen it running, and again, before we can actually use it, we're gonna need a guard, we're gonna need some, uh, um, some pin spanner holes and a pin spanner wrench to tighten this down, and we'll start on that next time. If you're enjoying these videos, please give me a thumbs up and leave a comment. Let me know what you like about the videos, let me know what you'd like to see more of, and uh, be sure to subscribe so that you will be notified of future videos. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.